Boom, boom, boom. This is Jared, and I'm back. That's right. I am your host of the Warriors Quest show, Jared A. Brown. And we are going to have a great show. All right, guys, man, we're going to get it rocking, man. This is going to be so lit. All right, we've got a great show tonight. All right, we're going to be showing you a kidney warrior tonight who's searching for a kidney donor. All right, we're going to have this guy who's going to be on, who's going to be talking about his journey and what he's gone through to this point. It's it's a great story. It's uh, the, What he's gone through is just amazing. And so, please, I'm going to ask you, don't be stingy. All right, please share. I see that uh, Jim, Uncle Jim shared. Thank you. Lisa Baxter shared. We got some sharing people here. Pow, 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 sharing. All right. So please continue to be, um, please continue to share this so that we can get this message out to the masses and let them kiss our, all right, get it out to the masses. All right. So let's, uh, let's get this rolling. All right. I've got a great guest. All right. Like I said, all right. I've got, I've got Wes Lang. All right, from upstate New York and his wife, Melissa Lang. I'm going to bring on this couple and they're going to share with us his journey and what they've gone through together to this point. All right. And their search for a living kidney donor tonight. All right. So let's boom, knock it out of the ballpark. All right. Because it's October, right? Like Mr. October, let's get this going. All right. Here we go. Let's give them a great special welcome. I'm going to give them a VIP intro. Come on, welcome. Hey guys, how how's it going? Hey, good. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm great, man. This is awesome. I'm so so happy we've got you on here. Um, seriously, um, I've got I, I've had people in, in my circle of friends online that put this helped put this together, and so I'd be uh, I'd be so uh, I would not be very considerate if I didn't thank them. So I, I want to. I want to thank my, my twin brother, Jeff, uh, Jonathan Trailer, and anybody else who's helped uh, get you guys connected with me to, today to make this happen. Um, I'm, I'm super excited to do this. Wes, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it. And uh, I, I want to get your story out there so as many people can hear this. Uh, so please, everybody else, don't be Stan Jay. Share this, please. But Wesley, uh, Wes and Melissa, um upstate new york all right uh what is it uh it starts with the c Cortland. help me out here we're about 30 miles from syracuse all right all right 30 miles from syracuse all right so it gives me a pretty good idea where you're all from um 
introduce yourselves to the Warriors Quest uh, followers and uh, let them let, let's just kind of get your story going just a little bit. All right, let's let's start with all right, how you found out you got kidney disease and you know how long you've had it. Something like that. Let's just get it rolling that way. Let's uh, let's rock and roll. Let's get your story told. Um, I was diagnosed back in uh, 2000. 2000. Uh, I was 30 when I found out. And uh, I was just beginning to start the downtrend with my kidney. And uh, it's just really, really been an uphill battle here for the last seven or eight years. Um, I've been on dialysis for the last four years. And I've been on the list for four years. Kidney. List. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it, I do dialysis three times a week. It's, it's kind of like a part-time job. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it really is. And I mean, you, you do that and you usually have one or two doctor's appointments during the week also. Uh -huh. so it's just, it's pretty much a full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's frustrating. I'll be honest. You know, it's, it's, it's been that way for a long time. I've always been real self-sufficient for myself. And now there's a lot of things I can't do that I used to be able to do. Right. You know, um, Jonathan, Jonathan trailers watching, he's saying, what's up. Uh, he's saying hi to Lisa as well, but you know, he was saying hello to you guys. Um, you know, Wes, you, you brought up something right there. I just kind of want to talk about because, uh, you know, if, when, when we have, when we make income um, and we have a, a way to make a living and and then something happens, whether it's a chronic disease, like in your case, or maybe somebody else, um, you know, they lose their job, something like that happens and the income is taken away. Um, we sometimes we sometimes lose our identity a little bit and and I can. I've been I've been laid off before and it and it took me uh, in 2015 I was laid off and I had to find you know I had to find uh, another job and so in that year I felt like I felt odd like I was used to bringing in income and helping out and and making sure that sometimes you know that I'm at least helping with my family and 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 things of that nature so how how difficult was it for you when you were used to, you know, doing things like that? And then this disease has, has changed the way, you know, your family structure is set up uh, financially. Uh, it, fine, it, there's two different steps to it. There's a the financial step and then there's the emotional step of it also. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's terrible. You lose the money and all that kind of stuff. It's also bad when you, when you don't, you're like a shell of what you used to be. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it is just, you know, it just, it takes a toll on you mentally wise. Right. It, uh, that, that toll is, uh, something that, uh, you know, is real. Uh, many kidney warriors talk about, uh, the emotional toll is sometimes much, much bigger uh, is, has a bigger impact on them than even the physical toll. Uh, my sis, my sister-in-law, and I want to say what's up to my my twin brother Jeff. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, so my sister-in-law has uh, Jeff's wife has she has experienced that uh, the roller coaster ride, right? I mean, because that's what uh, it is. You've got, you know what I mean. You've got these peaks and valleys. So okay. tell us. You know, and that's real. I want to, and I want to, um, I want to, I want to say that I commend you for, and that's why we often call kidney disease patients kidney warriors, and that's why we call this the Warriors Quest Show, uh, because you fight every day. You put your 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 gloves on every day. Yeah, every it, day it, to fight. That it's so true. You know, I mean, if it's not physically wise, it's emotionally wise. If it's not emotionally wise, it's okay. mentally wise. It's, uh -huh. it's there's always some kind of fight going on. So tell us a little bit about um, how the doctors, uh, you know, uh, kind of told you about why you have kidney disease, uh, what if they did a biopsy or what their prognosis was. 
In uh, 2000, when he was diagnosed, um, Wes sometimes forgets a little bit of it from having some seizures caused from his um, illness as well. So in 2000, um, he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Okay. Um, and um, like most people probably with diabetes, you know, if I don't feel sick, I must not be sick. So he wasn't the best at taking care of it in the beginning. Um, and as things roller coastered out of control, um, in 2015, Wes ended up having a heart attack, stroke, and kidney failure wow. all at one time. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah, Say that one, again. In 2015, he ended up having um, a stroke, which caused him to have a heart attack, which caused him to go into kidney failure. Oh, um, my gosh. So, yeah, they rushed him to the hospital, um, said he wasn't going to make it through the night. Um, uh -huh. Ten days in ICU, four days in a coma. Four um, days in a coma? Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Um, and he's a fighter. If anything else, yes. he's definitely a yes, fighter. Yes, he is. Um, Absolutely. Wow. And uh, he ended up making it through that. And then that's it was shortly after that that they said he was actually type 1 diabetic. The whole um, time. Oh, my god. The gosh. whole time. Correct. Um, wow. So it was being mistreated, I guess, kind of in a way. Sure. Um, he, he should have been on insulin the entire time. Um, and yeah. at that point, that's when they decided he was going to need to be on a kidney transplant list. And um, his kidneys dropped down to 8%. 8%. Um, yeah. That's yeah. a significant drop. Wow. Yeah. That's that's. That's a whole lot all at once. Uh, and to imagine you're in a coma for four days. Wow. Yeah, it was it was pretty scary. I mean, I don't remember a lot of that night, what yeah. happened. I mean, I, all I remember is waking up and I've got all these hoses sticking out of me and they're uh -huh. telling me not to get out of bed. And, and <laughs> wow. I, all I want to do is get up and stretch my legs. So. Yeah. But it, it was. <laughs> that must have been very it, surreal for you. Unbelievably so. <laughs> yeah. So Lisa's saying here, power couple. Um, um, you know, and and Melissa, uh, kudos to you uh, for giving him so much support. Um, and it says a lot about your character and how much you know how strong your love is for him, um, because you know he has been through so much, and you're. You, you you just seem like somebody who's by your his side and and you're giving him so much support i love that absolutely um 27 years together and 27 um, years that's fantastic i spent half my life with him so i can't imagine not him not being there for the rest of it you know so that's why we're fighting so hard to do this uh-huh i i i would want everyone to understand the love that this 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 wife has for for wes um man this is this is a strong bond and a strong love that you have i want everyone to to do what we can to to support them please share don't be stingy all right and let's let's get the story out there this is just amazing um jonathan trailer has uh, a similar story as well he says and um and maybe you i don't know if you've had time to hear his his story as well but uh, it's it is has a very similar sort of uh, feel to it. It's good to have it's good to find um, like similar stories because, you know, this is what's great. So please, everyone comment. Facebook shows this more. If we have a lot of comments, makes it more visible. And the other thing that happens is it helps um, Melissa and Wes feel like they're not alone. So it's really great to hear the comments from people. Uh, we've got. Carbo here, he says he's uh, suffering from a kidney cyst. Uh, Jonathan so says he woke up that. in an ICU strapped to a bed, hoses, and on, dia on a dialysis machine. That's how he woke up. Wow. So, man, um, I mean, that. Uh, again, that must out of, coming out of a coma, um, what was, I mean, how did they, like, explain to you that you lost, like, four days, so to speak? What was your last... You know, how did that make you feel? And what was your last memory before that? Uh, the last memory I had is when I went to the initial hospital around the corner from my house. 
Yeah. And and I could I was in and out and I couldn't I couldn't really tell what was real and what I was dreaming and stuff. Okay. And that, and then I woke up and my wife was there and my daughter was there and and they just, you know, they explained to me that I'd been there for 4 days by that wow. point. <laughs> and I'm just kind of shaking my head going, I, you know, maybe I wasn't even really supposed to come out of this. Well, it's certainly div- it's certainly divine in nature. Um, I'm a man of faith, and I I, I don't see how uh, any other any other way other than God has His hand in this. And you know, um, and be, and when God does have His hand in something, okay, He's going to see this through. And so, um, please remember that God loves you, and God will protect you, um, even on your darkest day, even. Even on your 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 worst day, uh, physically, emotionally, he's gonna have your back. He loves you. Absolutely. Yep. So four years on dialysis, is that right, Wes? Yeah, four years okay. in uh, October. So. This month. All right. This month. So, um, are you doing in center dialysis, or are you doing home hemo PD? No, I do in center. It's, okay. It seems to be a little bit easier for me to do it that way because it makes me get up and go to it like it would be a job or something. Okay. All right. So, I, I mean, it's just smarter for me to do it that way. Okay. All right. And uh, did you have like surgery uh, for a fistula or do you have a um, a different method that they're using to, to dialyze? No, I have a fistula in my left arm. Okay. All right. And uh, how how is uh, your rapport or how well do you like your, your staff there at, at the center where you go regularly? Um, they're very professional. Um, they, they really like looking after their patients and stuff. They, they I, I enjoy the place. It gives me a little bit away from just being at home all the time. Right. OK. You know, and some uh, some other kidney warriors say that as well, that it gives them a chance to to get out of the house and, and feel like they're at least uh, doing something, you know, and if that's, if that's good for you, you know, man, uh, that's good because, you know, you know, your body, you know, you more than other people. And so if it works for you, then great. You know, some people love that interaction with the staff. Uh, they like the interaction with the other kidney warriors at, uh, in the center, you know, and growing a rapport and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. So, uh, how long, how long do you normally go when you're there about three hours or how long not, are you dialyzing? I I'm actually dialyzing for four hours, four hours. And then okay. it's, yeah. About 20 minutes to get on 20 minutes to get off. Gotcha. About five okay. Hours. So about five hours by the time you're done. All right. All right. And, uh, on an average, um, how does, how do you feel afterwards? Um, some people experience a lot of, uh, exhaustion. Yeah. Um, very drained it's almost like you're unplugged for a little while mm-hmm. um i'm i usually need to uh kind of just down it down for about two or three hours and then i start uh-huh. to feel my energy to come back and <clears throat> then i'm pretty good so okay all right so lisa has a question here um wes and melissa um she's asking have you ever had any issues with your fistula <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> the, the, the first fistula that I had didn't take. They okay. put it right in, the, in my wow. elbow on my left arm, uh-huh. and I had so much scar tissue in there from from IVs. taking IVs and and doing blood and everything to that arm. They had to go up higher and redo it. Wow. But even now, he um he still goes about every three months with what I call with getting rotor rootered. Rotor rooter. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And that's right. <laughs> and they go <laughs> he gets blockages and they have to go in and, and balloon it and open it uh-huh. back up so that he can it can flow um properly. Um so right. about every every two to three months he has to go have that done. <laughs> now I just got, I, I have this like vision of plumbing now in my mind. <laughs> I know, right? See? Roto rooter. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a pretty good analogy though. I do. Yeah. So Man, um, it's how did you go about picking your transplant hospital, you guys? Um, 
you know, there, there must be, you know, living in New York, there must be several options available for you. There were, we had um, the options of going to Rochester um, or going to um, Syracuse and it uh -huh. came down basically to, um, I was working three jobs um, trying to keep things going. Um, and it came down to who was going to be closest to home for us at this point. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, we are actually considering going into other states now to try to have him um, paired up with other hospitals out of state as well. Good, good, good. So I like that. I like that a lot. I know other kidney warriors have done the same. Um, uh, some some of them have even done like um, they have a total of four that they're linked with. And right. in some cases, if you've had testing done within a year, if I understand it well enough, then you can have the inf the medical records and information just transferred over to the other hospital without having to do all the testing again. Is that right? Um, for the most part, yes. Um, but from what our understanding is, is we just checked into this and um, other hospitals still require to have their uh -huh. own type of testing done, but okay. they can transfer most of his files. Like if he's had um, stress tests and, and the, the typical tests that he needs to, to be on the list, they can transfer those. Okay. All right. Well, good. I like that. I like that uh, you're trying to get uh, linked up with multiple hospitals. Multiple listing is really beneficial uh, for, yeah. I don't, I, I know of some other people that have had some real good success that way. So I like that a lot. Okay. But the only problem with that is, is that if you end up getting a transplant from another state or city like that, you've got okay. to do your aftercare there too. Ah, uh, okay. And your aftercare gotcha. goes up to a year after you get your transplant. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you almost have to uproot yourself. Yeah to do all this if you uh -huh. end up going to another state yeah pros and cons i hadn't thought about that so if you but, you know if you're connected to a hospital that's on the other end of the state <laughs> or mm -hmm. not necessarily right. your state like new jersey yeah. you know uh, then you've got to travel over there or connecticut or wherever somewhere that's uh you know somewhat regionally close you know well right. I, I mean here i am i've gotten four years on the list now I am actually, there's two lists. There's a kidney list and there's a kidney pancreas list. And I was on the kidney list and I re just recently got back on the kidney pancreas list. Okay. Uh huh. So, I mean, it's, and with me having the four years on there now for me to go somewhere else and start all over again. Oh, my it, gosh. I, yeah. you know, now that I have four years in, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, mm -hmm. Rotor rooter aside, he says he's rooting for you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah, and we got Ellen watching. Thanks, Ellen, for watching. She's saying you're a very strong couple. Uh, Ellen's Thank also you. looking for a living kidney donor. She was just on my show just last hey, week. Hey, best of luck to you. Yeah. So, um, so you, what you're saying to me is that um, if uh, if you're if you do get uh, success with the deceased donor from a, a hospital that's in either New Jersey or you get listed at a hospital that's, um, you know, in another state nearby regionally, so to speak, then you're going to have to to go there for up to the next year to go to the routine visits and stuff like that. Is that is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Approximately, yes. Because yeah. you, you have to do you do your blood work twice a week. Uh -huh. After you first get in your kidney and then it kind of, as you get longer into it and it, it kind of, uh, downs downsizes a little bit here and there, you okay. know, I'll go like once a week and stuff like that. But yeah. it's, there's so many after, after care visits, it's really hard to go to another city and state to do this. It's beneficial to get on the extra list in other states, but financially wise, it's, it's difficult as well. Right. Okay. Well, the it, it you know uh, statistically speaking, to find a living kidney donor, um, our you know our experiences has told us that um, it's usually people that are somewhat you know regionally or somewhat local that mm -hmm. are more apt to apply. 
Um, what if what have you guys done? Um, you know, to to maybe do things offline to gain you know more exposure. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe what you've done on your own um, without the internet to try to get the word out there yourselves? Um, yes, we I, we've actually thrown a couple of benefits for Wes, um, which out, turned out quite well. Had a couple hundred people show up. Oh, awesome. um, who, who have also um, shared the word. Yeah. Um, we had T-shirts made up, so there were like walking billboards. Uh huh. Um, as well as that, I had business cards made up that we hand out to people, um, and you know anybody that would be willing to take one, we hand them out to them. Uh -huh. um, we've had posters made that we put around our town um, and local businesses that would let us do that. Oh, very cool. So the local businesses that allowed you to do that, uh, you were able to 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 make some uh, some things all on your own to get more exposure that way. That's so cool. Correct, um, yeah. And, and that's great that they did. They, you know, uh, they're doing that because it's it's only helping them too because Man, uh, um, if, if local businesses can help you, then it just means that they're, you know, given um, they're looked at in a, in a good way as far as, you know, uh, doing something for somebody is always going to give them good exposure. And so Absolutely. it's a win. Yeah, it's a win win. That's that's really cool. So, yeah. Now um, we've got to. Uh, you know, we've got Jonathan here. He's saying all great ideas for advocating, you know, and there have been people that have also put out, you know, uh, T-shirts, um, the people that have done like magnets on their cars, um, people that have also put together some T-shirts and stuff like that. So are always really creative ideas. Business cards are really good because they're super simple to give out, right? You just, you just say, yeah, super simple. Um you know, and you can hand them out, you know, whether it's uh, at a family gathering or maybe at work or I don't know, wherever, like uh, some businesses will have those little, those bulletin boards, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, well, we, uh, gross, grocery stores always have those, right? We also did like the glass chalk so that we, uh -huh. our, we turned our car and our friend, friends' cars and family's cars into driving billboards. So we wrote the information on their windows so All when right. they're driving around, people see that as well. Great, great. So the, the glass chalk is a really good one. So and that's not very expensive, is it? So it's relatively no. inexpensive. Isn't it? Yeah, you can buy like a, a package of two or three markers for like five dollars, or you can get the more elaborate neon colors and type stuff for like ten dollars. Very cool. Very cool. That's great. Um, I like that a lot, you know, because People are going to see your car, uh, except for when, you know, it becomes winter time and, and there's not much driving. But when the, right. when you are driving, you know, you're going to park it sometimes where you may be in a store or you may be somewhere like, a, I don't know, uh, maybe you're going to the hospital and uh, you park there at the hospital. You're going to be there for an hour or, or longer and someone's going to walk by inevitably. So it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we also did, uh, I did a live interview for my dialysis spot. Really? Too, and I seem to get a lot of, a lot of re reactions from that. Because people okay. don't really know, you know, I showed no, them they went in and, yeah. and what you go through in the time that you're there. Yeah. You know, that, so, that, that's, I mean, uh, I had a lot of response on that. No, I like that. I like that a lot. You're right. Um, so what sometimes happens is the, you know, and, and people comment, please. Um, I would like to see some comments here. Please comment if you have done some other similar things or if you have some other creative ideas. But uh, one of the things that I like to do is to, and, and you kind of alluded to this, and that's why I want to talk about it, is that um, people that are already, who are already connected to kidney disease that are watching, they've, if they've been on dialysis, or they have a caretaker, a loved one who sees you, they may understand it better. But the people who aren't connected to this disease, as you just said, they, they don't have a, a greater education about it. And so it's, it's fabulous. Is that you know, a, 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 a live video when you're on dialysis shows them exactly what's happening, you know, and that that gives them kind of a, a bird's eye view you know, about 
what's happening and how you're connected and what's going on and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, okay, it becomes a little bit more, it becomes real, you know, because uh, for some people, friends, uh, even dare I say family, okay, they, they know you, but they don't know really what you're going through. Okay. That's exactly Do you know what I mean? True. Absolutely. Yeah. I so, think that was one of the biggest shockers for myself even is the fact that when this first happened to him and you don't think about it till it hits home, but when it first happened to him, um, coming to the realization of how many people out there have kidney disease and need kidney transplants. And I knew nothing I mean, zero about it until it happened to us. And yes. that's just a sad reality. It is. It is. And that's um, that was the case for me with my twin brother, Jeff's you know, wife, my sister-in-law, is that I did not have. Um, I mean, I had a very vague you know, understanding of kidney disease mm-hmm. and, until it hit home. You know what I mean? And, and yes. until it affected my brother and his family. And then, mm-hmm. you know, my eyes were open, so to speak. I, I became, you know, I was awakened. You know what I mean? Yes. And, uh, and, and because I, I was a, awoken, you know, um, after that, it's like I, I, I couldn't, you know, just stand idly by like we've talked about offline. And, you know, and so that's a, I want to, I want to say that's a great way to, to kind of help people see um, kind of, a, again, a real thing that goes on. Um, mm-hmm. Because sometimes when you can show something raw and real, um, it can resonate more with people. Absolutely. You know, so, so, you know, it's, so that's why um, I'm, I'm real with people uh, as much as possible as I, I can be goofy and silly, but I'm passionate about kidney disease. Um, I'm passionate Absolutely. about it. And I want to help as many people as possible uh, because I've seen how it affects uh, other kidney warriors, how it affected my sister-in-law, how it affected my brother because, you know, he was the caretaker like you are to him, what, you know, to you, you know, like you are to your husband. That's how my brother is to his wife. And, you know, it affects the family in a different way, you know, and because absolutely. Um, and so I I I wanna I I wanna have everybody who's watching this, um, you know, that's what I want people who aren't connected to this disease. I want them to have a glimmer of understanding, a glimpse, you know, um, just a sliver of understanding um of how a kidney warrior, you know, the day in, day out sort of life. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not an easy thing. The emotional toll, okay, we've talked about briefly already, Wes. Um, what, what uh, is maybe something that's regular as well for you that that is common with other kidney warriors? Do you go through insomnia at all, or? I insomnia is somewhat. I take I take uh, sleeping pills to help me sleep. I, right. I don't have a hard time getting to sleep, but I have a hard time staying asleep. Okay, gotcha. Um, mood swings. The mood swings is a big thing. You don't. Right. I mean, you could be at one end of the spectrum and fly to the other quick. You know. Uh-huh. I mean, it, it, that uh, depression. Depression. There's. Uh, I'll tell you, what, food. The way food tastes. Sometimes it could taste fantastic. Sometimes it's it's like cardboard. I heard that it's from other really, kidney water. Yeah. It's really weird. I mean, like one of these meals, it could be fantastic the first day and you do it again a week later and now it tastes like cardboard. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's hard to have to eat because you are a diabetic. You have to eat. Yeah. Let's, I want to hear uh, from other kidney warriors who have had any other similar, uh, uh, maybe the same sort of thing happened to them with their taste of foods as well. Lisa or Jonathan, other people, uh, I'd like to hear some more comments about if it ever affected them that way um so it, you take you take some medicine to for it to sleep better um mm-hmm. what about anything else that, that you may go through whether it's uh of course exhaustion is what a lot of people you've mentioned it um after mm-hmm. having been through you know your normal um session at dialysis you feel wiped out but uh before dialysis um 
do you feel also wiped out because of the toxins in in your body um what kind of physical sort of uh state or condition do you feel in on a day-to-day basis it it's a big roller coaster yeah uh, you know sometimes you got your highs sometimes you got your lows sometimes you just roll straight uh-huh. and, and what i mean by that is is that before you go to dialysis one day you may be all right with it the other day you're just you're whack before you go uh-huh. you know you're just kind of like have no energy and that kind of stuff and then I've gone to dialysis, got done with it, and felt very energetic and was all right. And then there's other times that I feel like I need to go home and sleep, to be honest. What's real? And, and that's what we want. We want people to understand what's real. You know, uh, we want to be able to help articulate how how this has made your life different. Um, you know, and. And some some kidney warriors, it's going to affect them differently. And some some of them, um, you know, they don't go through the depression. Uh, but the majority of kidney warriors, I think, do, and it's real. Um, and so, you know, I've, I I I've uh, struggled I've struggled with depression in my life, um, and I'm not afraid, and I'm I'm not too big of a man to say that. Um, I've had two of my parents die of cancer, and I've had my sh- fair share of things happen in my life where uh, things take an emotional toll. And so, you know, a lot of kidney warriors struggle with it. Um, So, you know, the support is real. Uh, We had a show that comes on on the Urban Health Outreach Media um, Network uh, uh, earlier tonight called uh, Mental Health and Me. That's a really good show. Um, And we've got a uh, in fact, yeah, it was just, in fact, it's funny that I just said that because Steve, I think, is putting on here. Uh, you know, we just talked about that tonight on Mental Health and Me. It's funny that I was just saying that and he posted it or commented about it. But um, Sade and Steve were talking about this on the show earlier tonight. Um, if you get a chance, look, you know, watch the the episode. Uh, just go to the Urban Health Outreach Media Facebook page or the YouTube channel, of course, and you can find that. It's a really good episode. Um, so, you know, Elise is saying that she had to go, uh, get used to the routine of going three times a week, you know? So there's the, like you said, it becomes like a job where you've got to now get used to going, you know, and then getting up for it, um, you know, um, and then going, getting home and feeling the wiped out sensation again. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, so how, how is it for you, Wes, with the, the, the needle that they use when you go to in center. Um, They they use a a 15 gauge is what they use. Is the the 15 gauge, the blue one much, much bigger one. Yes. Uh Uh, They do it. And I'm so used to it now. I don't even flinch. All right. All right. Okay. When they inject it. Um, One of the other things I did want to talk about is the fact of the roller coaster of emotions that you go through on an everyday basis, right, you know, cause they, you, you go in and they talk to you and they say, Oh, you're going to, you're going to get these phone calls and you're going to get these calls for kidneys and this and that. And in the four years that I've been on, I've had one phone call. Wow. And, and you really have to keep your emotions in check right? or they will run out of control. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I got the call. I went in, I was, I was, 15 feet away from surgery and they tell me I can go home that the pancreas had some blood clots Wow! and just tell me like, okay, I, we were, we're all at a big max at the McDonald's or something. <laughs> but like I told him, somebody got their miracle that day. So. And, and, right. we, and that was the way we were able to accept it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, okay, I, I can't have the pancreas, but why can't I have the kidney? Right. Problem is, is you're jumping people in the kidney line. When yeah. they call people in, they call four or five people in. Okay. And what they do is if if they don't get if the kidney and the pancreas don't stay together, they end up giving the kidney to the next to the highest person on the list that's there oh, that, to, that, that makes there sense. in the hospital. And, uh-huh. and it does. And I mean and, and they couldn't under I couldn't understand it when I first went that night. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's like my wife said, somebody else got their miracle that day. Right. And, and that was, a, and that was a great thing. 
And you really have to keep your emotions in check. Yeah, and I've heard from other kidney warriors uh, who say that, you know, that they try to stay as even keeled as possible. But it's not, I can only imagine that's not uh, an easy thing to do where you try not to get too high and too excited and then not to get too low. Uh, it's got to be, as I can only imagine, difficult to kind of keep those emotions in check and not get too down on something that doesn't necessarily, necessarily go your way. Um, yeah, the, the wife and I have talked about that many a times. Mm -hmm. And and I tell her that I have to be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That it, I just can't get in that, that big roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And the hopeless feeling, too, when you, you know, you only get one phone call in four years, it starts to begin to feel hopeless, you know. Um, so I have to keep his, his spirits, spirits up. up with that <laughs> as well. So. No, uh, I, you know, uh, I think every single person that's watching this broadcast, um, everybody included, can understand that one phone call in four years would get virtually anybody down. I mean, that's absolutely. that's that's human nature, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and absolutely. Even, I think Clark Kent, okay, the Man of Steel, <laughs> all right, would probably get down. All right, <laughs> Kryptonite aside, okay, if he needed a kidney, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, something like that. Right. But uh, um, you know, and Ellen's saying your your miracle will happen, and Ellen, your miracle will happen as well. Um, absolutely. Yes, I so, heartedly believe that. The this you know the, the keeping the spirits up is a huge thing and again um, M Melissa um, I, I I just am in awe and I admire your toughness and strength because you two together is going to be something that's going to keep him together um, and, and keep him the best West that he can be and man I, I again I commend you and I, I so want to say. Uh, great job on, on keeping him together as much as possible. Um, Thank you. What, what are some ways in which you've been able to do that? Like, um, is there like favorite music, favorite songs that maybe you like to listen to to keep your spirits up? Are there movies that you like to watch or uh, books that you like to read? Just, you know, we spend as much time as we possibly can spend together. Uh, it could be watching the local news or, All right. you know, be outside watching the fireworks go off or something. You know, and it, it, it doesn't matter what we do as long as we're together. Yeah. Well, I got to say, um, uh, any any of the photos that I see you together uh, on your Facebook page, uh, it, it, you can see the love that you both have for one another. And it's 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 just amazing. You know, uh, and love like that should not be overlooked. All right. We, you know, my, my twin brother, Jeff watching again. Thanks for watching, bro. Uh, says West has an incredible support group who rally around him and share everything posted on his kidney donor search page. So let's talk about that. What, um, you know, cause you talk, you, you said just, uh, briefly that there was a time where you felt like, you know, maybe it was a little bleak. You know, naturally so, again, because you only got one call. Um, what turned things around and what happened when either my twin brother got connected with you guys or uh, like uh, Jonathan Trailer or some other people? What's happened to kind of give you maybe a better positive outlook that way? Um, well, when I first started his Facebook page, um, I was really excited, really hopeful. I was gung ho. Let's do this going to get this kidney. Um, and again, um, I was working three jobs and trying to keep up with that and take care of him. And we had two teenagers and it, things, you know, got rough and people weren't sharing. I mean, in the beginning they were sharing, sharing, sharing. And then all of a sudden it was like, I kind of felt like it was getting crammed down their throat a little bit, I guess. And they kind of backed off the sharing so as they backed off, I kind of started feeling a little hopeless about doing it um, and tried starting other tactics, of uh, other ways of trying to do it. And then um, and then your brother um, contacted me. God bless him. Thank you so much, him and Jonathan. 
and yourself. Um, your brother contacted me and said he would like to help and explained his story to me. And I, I was like, okay, yeah, let's do this. And I don't think I expected him to go to the lengths that he did, but he rejuvenated me. He nice. like, he made me feel like there, I wasn't alone. Cause I guess when you said that earlier, it kind of connected. I really felt like I was alone in trying to do this battle for him. Mm -hmm. Um, and your brother stepped in and, and really gave me hope and made me realize that I wasn't alone. Amen. Um, and, amen. And then Jonathan stepped in and just, and, and then you stepped in and it just, it kind of snowballed effect. And, and I saw people like really starting to share again and, and it gave me renewed hope. That's awesome. You know, renewed hope can be very powerful. Um, Absolutely. Because, yeah. It's like a seed, right? Yeah. You know, yes. Because it, it, Sometimes our faith can can you know get weak, um, and then something happens to kind of rejuvenate it, you know, and and kind of enhance it, you know. Absolutely. It works. You know, it works that way for like you know. Um, I live in a rural area in Hooper. Okay, so I'm going to make a farmer analogy, but you know, when you're culti <laughs> when you're cultivating, right? And you know, the farmers here. They, um, I live in a city. It's a, uh, it's known or famous for tomatoes. In fact. Their city festival where I live, um, it's called Tomato Days. <laughs> it's okay. That's their okay. city festival. <laughs> you know? So okay. when you're when you're growing tomatoes, all right. If you everybody can grow tomatoes, so it's a really simple sort of uh, you know visionary thing for me to talk about this is that um, if you have put it in a pot, okay, you can start out by by putting some seeds in there or you can buy those little starter plants, right? They're smaller. They've already, the nursery's already grown them a little bit, right? Yep. Either way, either way, you, you're, you're going to have to start it out, okay? And then in the, you're going to have to maybe cultivate it a little bit, all right? Mm -hmm. And there may, it may actually, um, you know, it maybe gets too hot one day and all of a sudden it doesn't look as good, you know? And then one day you have to give it, it you maybe got busy, you didn't give it enough water. You know, right. and mm -hmm. so that's how our faith is sometimes, you know, it's going Absolutely. to wane, you know, it's, it's going to get weak because maybe we didn't give it enough, um, I don't, whatever, you know, um, enough rah, 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 or, you know, we didn't give yes. it, yeah. uh, we didn't give it enough food. Right. But right. then when something happens, okay. Like some miracle grow, you know, some fertilizers, <laughs> <to> give, <laughs> give it a little hope, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden that, all of a sudden the plant starts to kind of, you know, branch out and these, you know, it starts to look a little uh, cheerful, you know, it looks a little bit better, you know, and, you know, and Absolutely. you may start to have some setbacks every now and then, but that one thing that created more hope and made that look a little bit more cheerful, so to speak, that one, that one little event incident can yeah. actually be, so, it can be a catalyst right absolutely it, it can lead to not only continuing to hope even you know and you you're still gonna have to fertilize that hope you're gonna have to kind of increase it and feed it and so mm -hmm. on and so forth get it water whatever and make it grow more but that one thing that happened that caused it to get rejuvenated and could become a catalyst that's what we're looking for right now, okay, is that we want to be able to rejuvenate your hope, your your supporters' hope, your followers' hope, and let them all know this can happen. Yeah. This yeah. can happen, all Absolutely. right? Um, you know, so please share this uh, because this can take a life of its own, so to speak, and on an internet, we can do great things together. I know this because my <laughs> my twin brother and I made this happen. We've made it happen for other people. Um, we've been able to to help energize Facebook pages for people like yours, your Facebook page, and others. Um, you know, engagement is key. So and he's right. Okay, so people, um, let's comment. Let's comment until your fingers get a little sore. All right, maybe not to that point, but you know what I mean. Please comment. <laughs> I don't want you bruising your fingers, but you know, comment, please. Um, if you comment, uh, if you share, 
All right. Facebook looks at that and it builds a more engagement and it helps us become more visible. All right. And we know that we want this to be visible because we don't want West to feel invisible. We want you to feel like you're getting seen. Okay. Because you are a somebody you are of much worth and you have great worth. In my eyes, your your wife's eyes, everybody's eyes, you are of great worth. And we want to get this story told. We want to give you some miracle grow fertilizer and get the, your hope <laughs> growing like no other. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, I appreciate everything everybody's doing. And, you know, and the best of luck to everybody else that's in the same boat. Absolutely. If there's um, I, anything we can do to help them, let us know. Absolutely. We're all we're all here together. A big community yep. is much stronger together than we are alone or apart. Most definitely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So Ellen's saying that she didn't know I had a twin brother, so that's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, um, you're not seeing double. Um, you know, keep <laughs> believing. Jonathan Trailer, exactly. You know. Um, yes. We've got to believe. We've got to believe, and we got to keep our we. When we, you know, especially doing it together. All right, uh, great things happen, and we are a great kidney disease community. Um, by golly, we've got so many great people that are commenting here tonight. Man, Lisa Baxter is like a superhero. Um, she has her own show, the Lisa Baxter Show, on Sundays. Um, you know, we've got Jonathan Trailer who was on my show. I, did I tell you guys this? He was on the Warriors Quest show in August. All right, which isn't that <laughs> long ago. Yeah, and, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it was in August. And Homeboy, after my show, like maybe two weeks later, gets a kidney, and it was just wow. such a great story. Um, and um, I have so much admiration and respect for Jonathan Trailer. He's got such an upbeat personality, uh, and he he really wants to give back, and he's so zealous. He's got so much thirst and hunger to give back and to help people now that he's got uh, a new lease on life, a new gift that's been given to him, and he wants to give back, and it's awesome. All right, so we've got... Yeah, but we've got a great a, a great community. I want to emphasize that we've got some people commenting here, and, and we've got people that are sharing. Uh, glory, absolutely. There, glory be to the one, the one high God. And we've got uh, a lot of supporters here. And Jeff, my twin brother, says that your followers are giving you good support. Uh, and yeah. it sounds like you know when when he helped you out and made some posters and did did some different videos. He's got those animated videos, you know, and stuff that he does. It sounds like, you know, you've, it, you've, your page sort of got re-energized, right? And it's sort of yeah, getting more good. Absolutely. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to put up, um, I've got at the very beginning of my comment section. I'm going to bring that up again. Here we go. So this is your the link to the Facebook page. Um, let's see if I may have it in here. I'm going to post it in the comment section again as well. So that way people can go to it and they can view. Uh, please like it. Um, follow him and his page. Share whatever you can on his page. And, and then across the screen down below, okay, down below we've got the hospital information. Uh, there's And it's I've got that also um, in the comment section. And anyway, that information can be found on your Facebook page as well. So um, yes. the hospital information is your the trans your main or primary transplant hospital. And so we've got the phone number here. If you would, if you feel stirred, inspired, okay, and if you feel all right, just as much compassion for him as I do, please, all right, please apply to be a living kidney donor. His hospital does accept the paired exchange program. The paired exchange program is powerful. Any healthy person, okay, can apply with the paired exchange program. And statistically, a paired exchange program can help speed up 
his chances of having a transplant because if you get somebody who applies and they're not your right blood type that's okay in fact i did that on purpose i'm not even showing your blood type on the information because i want people to know that regardless of the blood type they can tr they can apply to be your donor with the paired exchange program if they're not the right fit then they there are procurement organizations that the hospital will use and that they're affiliated with and they'll use different ways to try to connect you with somebody else who is the right blood type and this paired exchange program could actually lead to multiple people getting a kidney it mm -hmm. can yes, it's right. happened multiple times you know um so i'm excited to get this going um yeah in fact um uh, uh, We've got uh, Lisa Baxter, by the way, by the way, I'm, I forgot to mention this. So Lisa Baxter is on the cover of a magazine. Um, I'm forgetting what the name of the magazine is, um, but she's on, it, she has PKD and she's on a cover. I think it's PKD related, but she's on the cover of it. So, you know, great um, for incompatible blood types. So he's, I think he's touching on the paired exchange program again that we're talking about. So, you know, the, the getting people to call, please just share this so that we can have somebody call because as Wes already knows, you know, hope is like gold. All right. Hope is the most powerful word in any language. Okay. I speak German and it, it's Hofa in German. All right. Ich hoffe, I hope. Okay, I can say it in virtually any language, and it's, in my opinion, PK Day Life Magazine is what she's saying, yes. But it's the most powerful word, in my opinion, in any language. Okay, and we want to give you as much hope as possible. That's what I love about this show, because just like you said, all right, you both have said that, you know, that when you feel like something is good is happening, it gives you more hope. And mm -hmm. what what can other people do to help you along this journey that maybe you can, whether it's uh, telling them their own story so that they can hear, you can hear theirs, or what are some other things that maybe these other kidney warriors that are watching tonight, what would you like to say to them uh, and what kind of help could they give you? You know, there's, there's lots of times that you get hit hard and you get knocked down. Yes. And you kind of you kind of lay there on the ground and feel sorry for yourself a little bit and this and that. Then you get pissed off and you hit your hands on the ground and says, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this war. I may lose a couple of battles, but I'm going to win the war. And uh -huh. you get right up and you take it on the chin and you just keep going. Right. Right. Amen to that. You That's don't give kids... this disease uh, uh, a choice in the matter. No. You tell this disease you're going to beat it and you're going to beat it. I'm going to win. I am going to win this war when I'm all done. Absolutely. Put it out there. Believe it. And, and don't back down because you, uh, you got to believe it. You do. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to get knocked down. You may get knocked down, but you're going to get back up. That's and it. That's right. You're going to continue to fight. Like I said, you got your gloves on every day and you're going to fight this. Yep. Uh, and, you know, and people that fight every day all right they know that even if they do get knocked down they're going to get right back up and i believe that you will uh, you've got a great support system um and i believe that we can do great things i do um i i, I know that we can do great things together when we're united and we show our faith and we show action so the faith is not dead because we're there are there are works there's action involved. We can make great things happen. Um, I, I really believe that. So let's, uh, we're about at the end of the show here, but Melissa and Wes, I, I, I'm very hopeful that this is going to get there um, and that your story is going to reach thousands of people. Um, okay. I know that we can reach a lot of people. Um, I just need people not to be stingy and please share this. Okay give this 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 couple this this couple that needs our help 
please give them support and share this share this to large facebook groups and get let's get this out there um what what would you what would you like to say in regards to um people that are watching tonight that are are commenting and giving you support and how would you like to what would you say to them before you leave tonight and i'll i'll you sh your answer can be uh, as brief or as long as you want and then i'm going to let you do a shout out to the people that you're thankful for uh i would say you know what any if we could help anybody as much as you guys are trying to help us and, and brought us into this community with open arms if you need us to share anything or anything like that send it to our facebook page and we'll share it right along with ours and i mean we would hope that you would do the same thing for us because that's what's going to get this word out for all of us and I just all right to thank you to everybody who you know came on and shared and is watching and the listening comments. to us comments um all the likes and shares and the love that we've received and the support we've received okay I, we we, I like we feel it and we really appreciate it all awesome awesome um i'm very thankful for the support uh, the overwhelming, overwhelming support that we've seen tonight from the comments, um, from Lisa, from Diane, Diane Bleese. I want to share that again in case, um, share your spare, give the gift of life. Thank you, Diane. Um, we've had some other Definitely. people watching Jonathan Trailer, of course, Ellen Dombro, who was my guest just last week. Thank you for, for commenting um just the the outpouring of support tonight from the comments to the sharing um and uh, steve belcher saying welcome to the family and you are part of the family now guys you're part of the family um, and we're we're going to do what we can to give you support um any way we can that's what's great about our shows is that um now that you're part of this big family all right any of our shows that we have you may get a notification uh, when one of those shows is on and you can watch those any one of these new shows that we have on and you may feel support just because you know that someone else maybe is talking about something you're going through or something you've already gone through. And so, Absolutely. you know, this is going to be a great community and we're going to rise up and we're going to give you the support that you need. So, man, I'm excited that we've done this together tonight. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity just to shout out the people that you're thankful for, any friends, family, uh, anybody else, and, and then we're going to end the show. But, man, this has been awesome. I'd like to say thank you to all of our friends and family who have shared, liked, and supported us through Wes's Facebook page, our Facebook pages. Um, I would like to say a special thank you to my children who have stood by us and helped us. Um, I would definitely like to say thank you to you, Jared, to your brother, Jeff, to Jonathan, um, all three of you and your community for accepting us and for supporting us and just being there to kind of renew the hope in us. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. This is, this is very humbling to me because I have never in my life asked anybody for anything. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. And and for you guys to show all the love and the hum, you know, just being humble towards me. It just makes makes my heart just bleed. You know, I love it. I mean, I've never felt this kind of stuff before. And, you know, for me to have to kind of bow down and say, hey, I need something from somebody, it, it changes you. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I, like I said, I mean, I, I, I love all the support and, you know, the people and everybody that stood up and, as many people as we can talk to it is the way it's got to be, you know, and mm -hmm. we would be more than happy to share everybody else's story too. Awesome. Absolutely. Love it. Um, seriously, guys, thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'm going to try to stay connected to you guys as much as possible. Um, and um, same here. Yes. And, and, and please. Okay. So I'm going to start a watch party tomorrow. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'll replay this tomorrow so that you can see my ugly mug again. Anybody who watches this again, but, um, you can, uh, you know, please, uh, you know, this is going to be replayed. So, um, this is going to continue to be shown. So thank you so much for, for coming on. Have a great evening. Okay, guys. God bless. Thank no, you. Thank you. you. God bless.
You're welcome. All right, guys, man, thanks for, for watching tonight. Uh, we've heard from Wes and, and Melissa Lang. Uh, Wes has been on dialysis for four years, um, and he's searching for a kidney donor. Um, he'd like to have a better quality of life, like a lot of other kidney warriors as well. So please, let's give him that opportunity. So please, don't be stingy. Please share. All right, get get click on that share button, wherever it may be. Let's see, where is it? Over somewhere over here. Click on the share button. All right, click that. Let's get this uh, out there to, to as many people as possible. And uh, let's let's get this out there to the masses. All right, masses. All right, we want this to. Okay, we want. I know it's flu season. Let's make this go viral. Um, you know, work tomorrow. Much love. Good night, Lisa. All right, and all right. Th thank you all. That's very sweet of you. Um, I love doing this. Um, I love doing it for you all. For all of the kidney warriors, I do this. Um, I want to give hope. I want to give this information out so that we can not only give hope, but more than just hope. All right. I want to give somebody the second life that they they need, a gift of life. Um, so let's let's gather together. All right. Let's come together as a community. All right. Get this out there to as many people as possible. Start a watch party. Share this to your own feed. All right. Share this to Twitter. Share it to Instagram. Um, share it to Snapchat. Um, share it to whatever you can. All right. You know, take a photo, of, a screenshot of this and then just, I don't know, print it out. And and give it, put it on your uh, your break room bulletin board if, in a break room at work. Do whatever you can. Let's get the story out there and and help this couple help make sure that we keep fertilizing that hope that I talked about and and keep it rejuvenated so that it doesn't wane, that it doesn't get weak, so that we can keep the energy alive. Okay, we need to keep this alive. All right. And also, OK, I want to thanks for reminding me, Steve. We're also we can also be found on a brand new Internet TV network. Now, the Urban Health Outreach Media has its own network. All right. Uh, it's it can be watched any time of the day. Uh, it's stream stream S T R I M M. All right. You can find us on stream. It's it's pronounced stream, but it's, it looks like stream. S T R I M M. All right, you can find videos that are going all day long, twenty four seven. Okay, past videos, mm -hmm. and then when the when the videos are, you know, you can watch them. You can do so many different things. We also have like a music channel there as well to keep people uplifted. Okay, and and keep people and their spirits up as much as possible. You can find us there. Find us on YouTube, of course. All right. Um, like Ellen says, it makes a big difference. Keep sharing, keep making sure that we keep hope alive, man. I appreciate all of your help. I appreciate you watching every week so that I can continue to, to make sure hope is strong for everyone that I help. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I'm going to say peace out. I'm going to do the, the outro here and I'll be back next week. All right. Watch. All right, we've got some excellent shows on the Urban Health Outreach Media Network on our on fa the Facebook page, YouTube, all right, as well as on Stream, S T R I M M. Watch us, all right? We're going to keep hope and we're going to make sure that everybody else has hope. So thank you. All right, peace out.